it's a great city. I love this city. Isn't it a great city? Yeah. The best part is that from uh, for Bangladesh, it's a great destination, okay? Like young men, they love to come here. Their hormones bring them here. <laughs> the same men, after 20 years, their hernia brings them here. <laughs> Bombrungan Hospital and everything. So in Bangladesh, the rich people come to Bangkok. They have a little mold, they come to Bangkok. The richer people go to Singapore. It's like a, like a category. So when I said I'm coming to Bangkok, my rich friends friends were telling me, oh, maybe is everything okay? <laughs> I said, no, I'm here for a comedy show. But the flights are really cheap, right? I go to Air Asia, Taka Bangkok, Taka, hundred dollars. Wow, awesome! Would you like to check out? Yes. Would you like a seatbelt? <laughs> <laughs> yes, two hundred dollars. <laughs> Would you like to check out? Yes. Would you like an aircraft? <laughs> Okay, yes, $400. Would you like a co-pilot? No. Are you sure? Yes, are you absolutely sure? I will take my chances. Okay, we're pleased to say that this flight will be commanded by Captain Kritika, and he has just been recertified after his quadruple bypass surgery. <laughs> Would you like a co-pilot? Hey, yes! Twelve hundred dollars. I'm in Bangkok. But good, good looking flight attendants in Air Asia, right? Love this city. The food is so good. I love the food here. So first thing I do, I go to McDonald's. <laughs> no, no, I have, I get, get sick with all the french fries and I have to have a to pad thai, you know? And then, uh, and people are so polite over here, like so polite, sati and after the new government, coup d'etat. That's polite. <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, uh, I came here like 20, 30 years ago, and I felt so bad, I felt, you know, I'm like a young, good-looking guy, nobody's looking at me, and I'm just all these American, Western guys, European, American guys, okay, Canadian guys, too. and then, you know, they have all these beautiful women with their masks. Now you don't see that. Thank God for the recession. <laughs> In America. <laughs> and then you go to Patea. You know, over there, you know, the walking street? They, have, they say, are you handsome? I let you, you come here, ping pong dance. Are you <laughs> Twenty-five percent of chicken tikka masala. <laughs> There's a tandoori restaurant back in the middle of the red light district. <laughs> the Indians are everywhere. How many Indians in the house? Make some noise. <laughs> See that? See that? Indians are statistically everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. You saw that movie, The Martian, Matt Damon? Poor guy, he spent so much time trying to grow potatoes. He should have just gotten into his rover, driven around the mountain, there would have been five chicken tandoori restaurants right over there. <laughs> These guys are everywhere. Nila, where are you? Where? This guy's my friend. You know, this is how I am. We were colleagues like 10 years ago. You know, not another era. And just because I have a show, I have to bring in. Let you bring one Indian, like there are 12 people right here. <laughs> this is what it is. You know this? You can feel a comedian. You always book an Indian or a Bangladesh. <laughs> Just let him stand over here with the chicken tandoori masala. The half of the comedy club is going to be full. Got it? That's the key. You guys are everywhere. You guys are like, so, is that a yes or a no? <laughs> I was just like, I was just complimenting. He said, yeah. I have no idea. Is it a compliment or not a compliment? <laughs> In fact, that's one way you can tell the difference between a Bangladeshi and an Indian, you know? We don't do this. No, we don't do that. <laughs> and in South India, you know, this is a yes, and this is a no. <laughs> I do have a very smart Indian friend, you know? And he was telling me, hey, we watch very closely, and always a horizontal motion from right to left, left to right, right to left, left to right. A yes is a similar motion from right to left, but a little oscillatory. <laughs> Indians over here. Very smart people, very smart people, and that's why they like the 21st century Julius Caesar, right? Conquering the world. I came, I saw, and I outsourced. <laughs> that's why Donald Trump is 
is freaking out. Google CEO, Indian guy. PepsiCo, Indian guy. Microsoft, Indian guy. Next United States President, probably Bobby Jindal. Who knows, man? Donald Trump is freaking out. He looks at Silicon Valley. I'm going to make Silicon Valley great again. I'm going to make a huge wall around India. And you know who's going to pay for it? Pakistan. <laughs> Any Pakistanis in the house? Really? Yeah. <laughs> These guys are gonna kick your ass. No, I'm just kidding. That's not, that's not the game. What happens in Bangkok stays in Bangkok. That's why Modi should come over here. You know? <laughs> I mean, Modi should come here and Modi should come here. <laughs> now that's good. Let's give it up for the Pakistanis too. After the show, we may have a nuclear war over here. Anyway. <laughs> but India is, you know, what's your slogan, right? Incredible India, right? What's your slogan, sir, in Pakistan? Pakistan! Put India down. No, have a boss. <laughs> well, you lost. Uh, he's gonna kick my ass. You gonna kick his ass, he's gonna kick my ass. He's like a Palestine chain, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Some reason the Filipinos like that. <laughs> no, I was saying, you know, Donald Trump, you know, he's, he's great. I love Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, he is keeping us comedians in business. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it was all the comedians who voted him into power. Four years of uninterrupted supply of comedy material. <laughs> And he's also freaking out with Muslims, you know? And then, you know, I said, hey, man, I, you know, I live in the U.S. for a while. I said, hey, dude, you're a Muslim. Awesome. You can have four wives. I said, well, four wives means four mothers-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> now, that will lead a young Muslim man to go and blow himself up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call the Muslim version of four weddings and a funeral. <laughs> Now, we Muslim men actually can have four wives under the very strict condition that all four wives must be treated equally. So that means the song I just called to say I love you is a bloody confidence call. <laughs> now, of course, in reality, you know, you guys are nodding away. Any, like, an equation over here, you guys are half Muslim, like two women over here. <laughs> No, but you know, in theory, in reality, of course, we don't have four wives. Parag, do you have four wives? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's from Bangladesh, by the way. You know, this guy, I'm not going to tell his history, but he might get deported. But, anyways, <laughs> but in reality, we don't have four wives because boys will be boys. We love our own kids and everybody else's wives. <laughs> and with that, we come to the end of the show. Well, thank you very much. I got my light. You guys have been a great audience. Thank you very much. If you guys are drinking, please let somebody else drive, okay? Because remember, in Bangkok, 90% of the people are born by accident. Yeah. <laughs>